Hello and welcome to another Innovation Explained video. These days, innovation management is already a pretty commonly used term, but most people still don't quite understand what it means, uh, let alone know how to approach that in practice. So in today's video, we'll give you our quick take on the fundamentals of innovation management and we'll also provide you with some actionable tips on how to get better at it if you're already a practitioner. Now first, we've got to consider what innovation is. If you've been following us for some time, you've probably heard this already, but we like to define innovation in a way that cuts out all the fluff and ambiguity from the term and is just super pragmatic. Um, so our favorite is the Merriam-Webster online definition, the introduction of something new. Now, in practice, that can mean any kind of a change or improvement, all the way from new products and services to simpler changes to processes, business models, and so on. So essentially, any kind of an improvement you want to make as a business or an organization is an innovation. Now, the reason for innovation management being so important is that every business product and technology has a limited lifespan. Eventually, something better will come along and the old will gradually fade to history or at least become irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. So in the long run, if you as an organization want to stay relevant, you're gonna need new businesses and products which clearly are innovations. Um, but that's not all. In today's global and connected world, you need to get better every day just to stay relevant against current competition, which is why incremental improvements are vital for success, even in the short to medium term, regardless of where you currently are in the life cycle. So what great organizations do is they always have emerging products and businesses to take the company to the next level. Um, but getting a business at that point obviously takes time. So if you wait until you're already plateauing or declining, you're probably too late. That's because once you're in a decline, you no longer have the time or the resources to turn things around, which makes the situation quite painful. Um, for example, uh, this is where we'll probably see many internal combustion engine car makers be in a few years. Um, their business is already starting to show signs of decline, and when they'll start making losses, it's difficult to find the money to do big capital expenditures for transitioning to electric cars, especially when you're also battling for talent and limited supply of components and raw materials against entrenched and well-funded competition. So while investing in risky new ventures can be intimidating, the biggest risk of all is to actually not take any risk. If you do that, you will inevitably go out of business. It's just a matter of time when that happens. So as a medium or large organization, what you need to do is simultaneously work on innovations and businesses that will mature at different time horizons. And for that, these three horizons of growth model is a pretty nice and practical way to look at it. Um, there are plenty of short and midterm opportunities with limited risk available that you definitely have to go after, but you gotta make sure that you also don't neglect the long term. Now, if we get back to a slightly more practical level, to succeed at that, you need to approach innovation management in a pretty holistic way. You can't just set up a new business unit or innovation lab and expect them to take care of innovation for you even if they could create a solid new Horizon 3 product for you down the road, they can't really go in and do those Horizon 1 and 2 innovations for your existing businesses. You just need to have an ambitious yet practical and feasible strategy that focuses on innovation with these different time horizons, but you also need to have the right culture, organizational structures and capabilities in place to be able to pull it off. A couple of years ago, we did a pretty thorough meta-analysis of the available research on where innovation management goes wrong, and the results are a bit of a cautionary tale. Um, to borrow the Anna Karunina principle of happy and unhappy families to innovation, we could say that all successful innovators are alike, but all unsuccessful ones 
fail for a variety of different reasons and usually there's more than just one reason there so what's the takeaway well every innovator makes mistakes but the successful ones notice them learn from them and fix them before they become showstoppers so becoming an innovative organization is a process of continuous learning improvement and transformation that you need to dedicate yourself towards because no one will get it right off the bat so to help you plot that journey for yourself we've created the innovation maturity matrix um, the basic premise with the model is pretty simple to be a great innovator you can't just rely on the heroic efforts of individuals you need a pro-innovation culture and processes in place for turning ideas into improvements that actually create value and that also has to happen at the scale of the entire organization um, for example as i already mentioned if you just rely on r d or an innovation lab to deliver all of your innovation it's rarely enough to truly move the needle now don't get me wrong, it can still be a good idea for many to have that lab in place, but every business unit and support function also need to innovate in their own fields and areas of expertise. And someone needs to make sure that all of these improvements are moving the organization in the right strategic direction. However, very few organizations are actually there. Um, we've done quick assessments for more than 200 companies we've worked with, and less than 10% are in that advanced segment. Around 70% are either pure beginners or traditionals. And mind you, these are the companies that are already interested in and investing in innovation. The real figures are likely quite a bit worse for the average organization. So the end goal should always be to get to the top right hand corner. But depending on where you are, the path to get there will always be a bit different. In practice, that means that you'll likely have to do quite a lot of different changes to your existing processes and structures and also introduce many new ones. Um, so that's why it's really difficult to give you a specific roadmap for the entire journey. Um, having said that, there are countless well-known approaches and frameworks that you could choose to adopt. And we've actually written about many of those in detail. So I'll leave you a few useful links in the description below. Anyway. The bottom line is that for most organizations you can't just hop from not doing much innovation to overnight using the same processes as a company like Tesla or SpaceX does and expect it to work because you just don't have the rest of the pieces in place. So instead you're gonna have to build your capabilities gradually. So while an innovation leader can often be responsible for building new businesses an even bigger part of the job is simply enabling and unlocking innovation across the organization. Now, that's of course very similar to what business leaders in general do. The difference is just that your focus is on trying to change things and create new things, whereas a general manager will be more focused on the financials. So. As mentioned, there's obviously a lot of things you need to do to achieve those goals. So for more tips, check out some of the materials I've linked below as well as of course, stay tuned for upcoming videos. However, one very practical thing that you can quickly and easily do is to start running your innovation process systematically with a tool like Veeam. Uh, yes, it's a shameless plug, but the basic version of our software is free for an unlimited number of users and you can get started in just a couple of minutes via the link in the description. So why not give it a try? Anyway, that concludes our session for today. If you have any questions for us, please leave those in the comments below and subscribe to stay up to date on our future innovation related content. We'll see you again in the next one.